Hello everyone, my name is Sai Kiran. I have already uploaded a couple of uh, videos on YouTube with respect to ELI Docs. And uh, this video is particularly for the contents of the ELI Doc course. And the duration of the course is 15 to 20 hours. So we can complete the course in two weeks. So audience would be functional consultants as well as the webpers. And uh, the expected outcome is you'll get the in-depth in knowledge in IDOCs and uh, we'll be working on the real-time scenarios, how to troubleshoot the IDOCs and how to create a custom IDOCs and how to uh, extend an IDOC and uh, how to uh, analyze, uh, do the analysis on the standard IDOCs. <coughs> so by the end of the course, definitely you'll be uh, thorough with uh, concepts, basic concepts, as well as the uh, scenarios that come uh, with respect to IDOCs. And uh, as you know, my name is Sai Kiran. I put up 10 years of experience. So most of the times I worked on in interfaces, LIDOCs. <coughs> with coming to my training experience, I successfully uh, delivered uh, 12 batches. The batch may include two to three uh, 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 resources <coughs> so this is my email address saikiran.abapnw.gmail.com and this is my contact number 9849211666 and uh, let's have a look at the uh, topics of the course so mostly I tried my best to cover all the topics and uh, including the basic uh, uh, foundation topics uh, like what is ALE, what is ALE IDOCs. And uh, uh, besides that, uh, I took up uh, certain real time scenarios so that it would be handy for you whenever you are asked to uh, do some work, a piece of work on the ALE IDOCs in real time. The first one is the basics, EDI and ALE basics, introduction, what exactly is EDI and what is ALE and why do we call ALE IDOCs and why do we coin ALE with IDOC and all those things, IDOC segments, why ALE IDOC, what is IDOC type, message type, what is the extension of IDOC, uh, what is standard IDOC and custom IDOC, what is the difference and how many ways of triggering IDOCs. Basically, there are only three ways of triggering IDOCs. Okay, IDOC is not a complex topic, basically. If you chalk out in a particular uh, systematic way, so after the completion of this uh, 15 hours, 15 to 20 hours of uh, this course, definitely uh, you will have a very, very bright idea of what exactly IDOC is. So there are only three ways of triggering IDOCs. Okay, so, <clears throat> and uh, there are two processing modes. One is the outbound IDOC processing mode, and the other one is the inbound IDOC processing mode. And with respect to outbound processing mode, we'll see the connection configurations in outbound systems. That means how do you establish a connection uh, between the outbound system and the inbound system, sender and the receiver, logical system, RFC destination, message type creation, port creation, partner profile. So you will be creating everything from scratch okay in most of the scenarios mostly like uh, the logical system and the destination are already defined but we'll be taking two different systems not the clients basically so two different systems and we try to create IDOC in one system and uh, we send the IDOC to the other system that is one of the scenarios okay so coming to this outbound IDOC processing first one is the connection establishment and second one is the ALE IDOC configuration basically it's all about IDOCs, it's not connections. Coming to the inbound one also, we'll see the same connection establishments <coughs> and the ALE IDOC configurations. In that we'll see uh, uh, how to create a function module which receives IDOC and uh, which processes IDOCs, and what is the process code and uh, all the linking aspects with respect to the function module, basic type and message type. they are just a, a couple of T codes, but we need to understand it uh, thoroughly. And the next topic is distribution model, which is very important. See, I just talked about uh, the complete uh, uh, topics in a systematic way, as you can see here. So distribution model 
you can uh, uh, use the distribution model uh, to send an IDOC to different receivers. If there are multiple receivers, mostly we go with the distribution model. And not only that, there are a couple of other uses uh, when we go with distribution model. We'll see the complete scenario to send IDOC by this uh, distribution model. And we'll see what is a filter basically. You don't want to send a comp uh, an IDOC uh, uh, when a particular condition is met. That's what is called filters. We can filter I at the IDOC level and we can filter at the segment level. Okay. So basically the IDOC and segment as you see, you, most of you must have uh, uh, been familiar with the IDOCs. If that is the case, then I say that IDOC is just a container which holds some data content. The content is there in the segment level. Okay. IDOC is a name basically. IDOC comprises segments and each segment has a fields a group of uh, fields and that field itself carries some data we'll see that and next one is the reducer message type so it's opposite to the extended message type uh, similarly similar kind of thing and the seventh topic would be complete end-to-end -end standalone scenario okay so we'll be see we'll be looking at the complete end-to-end uh, uh, -end scenario by the topic four and five above means this one inbound processing and outbound processing okay creating and sending a standard IDOC from up one application server to another application server. This is a standard IDOC. Okay, next one is same thing with respect to custom IDOC that we create. Okay, standard IDOC is something that the container is already given by SAP. Custom IDOC is something that we prepare the container so that it can hold the uh, custom data or any type of data. So basically we are preparing a structure. And third one is a custom program to create the IDOC by using standard function modules. We'll create a custom program to create an uh, outbound IDOC. Okay, see, now see the complete scenario with respect to the complete standalone scenario. First one is the standalone one, right? End to end. Second one is message control. Third one is the change pointer. That's what I told in the initial uh, page. There are three uh, ways of triggering one is the standalone. Second one is the message control. Third one is the change pointers. That's master data. That's what uh, I try to explain it here. Standalone one scenario and message control will come. We'll see the scenarios. What exactly is message control and we'll see the uh, actual real time scenario. Third one is the change pointers. What exactly is change pointers? Change point is nothing but like whenever you say just an example, whenever you um, save uh, a material, you change a material. So let's suppose you take an attribute of a material, maybe color. Whenever you change the color of a material and uh, <coughs> the receiver is interested to capture that particular changed field data, then you have to inform the receiver. How do you inform? You'll inform in the form of an IDOC. That when does an IDOC, uh, when should an IDOC be triggered? The IDOC should be triggered whenever there is a change in the particular field of the material not the other fields that's what is called change pointers the triggering mechanism based on certain fields based on the triggering mechanism idoc will be triggered okay <clears throat> that is called change pointers the eighth topic would be reprocessing of idocs basically you receive an idoc and uh, uh, the receiver and like the data is not good basically means uh, just to take an example like you receive a sales order okay you receive an order Okay, so that order basically there is a customer. Okay, the customer is not yet created in your system. Then what happens? The IDOC goes into error. See the order, you cannot create an order based on the IDOC data because the order is not complete. The customer has not yet been created. Then what do you do? You create a customer or you rectify the error, whatever the error uh, that has been captured by IDOC. You rectify the error and then you <coughs> Reprocess there. You don't need uh, every time you don't need to go to the customer and say that boss I have uh, uh, Rectified my error. Please send the IDOC again. You cannot do it again all the time Right, so what you do is you receive IDOC and the moment you receive IDOC and whenever you uh, Encounter an error you rectify the error and you reprocess there. You don't need to Consult the sending party all the time. So how do you reprocess errors? Reprocess the IDOCs Ninth one is the enhancements to standard IDOC. 
okay so i made it optional topic because for functional so i don't think this is uh, the ninth topic is needed but for the abapus ninth topic is very very important because most of the times we work with the enhancements you take a standard idoc and you start enhancing the idoc okay it could be extension it could be reduced message tap or it could be a user exit where you are basically manipulate the data while creating the idoc or you basically uh, read the idoc data and manipulate such certain uh, uh, table data or you post something based on the received idoc okay so all related to um, exits <coughs> So the 10th topic would be uh, some of the important T codes, tables, and statuses and programs. I'll be giving a list of T codes and tables. Yes, it's not like you, you can get everything on the Google. But thing is like what I'm, whatever I'm giving you is the filtered out list basically that are basically <coughs> useful for you uh, based on the normal general scenarios. Okay. So the uh, 11th one is the troubleshooting or outbound inbound adox. So troubleshooting is related to your reprocessing also so whenever you uh, receive an idoc the idoc goes into error whenever you try to create an idoc the idoc goes into error when the idoc goes into error there is specific status message okay based on the status you have to react to that particular idoc so that you have to reprocess the idoc you have to reprocess the idoc in different ways okay <clears throat> So all the T codes and all the uh, programs which are useful to reprocess the IDOC and uh, to troubleshoot an IDOC. Basically, you send an IDOC. That IDOC has not been received by the receiving system, but that is in the green status. What do you do? So all those typical scenarios, okay, which normally uh, will be encountered at the time of uh, creating IDOCs, will be dealt in this particular topic. The twelfth one with the practical real-time scenarios and interview questions, basically. So real time scenario, I'll be giving a few scenarios which uh, which I came across and which most of the resources come across. And apart from that, I'll be giving some interview questions. So this is all about uh, the IDA content. So the duration, I'll be repeating. So, so yeah, there are certain, these are the scenarios. It's not that important. Okay, so the duration will be 15 to 20 hours. Mostly typically it goes in, uh, uh, up, up to two weeks okay saturday sunday i may not take but if at all uh, if there is any options during from my end or from your end during the weekdays then i take up the class on the saturdays or sundays so it's flexible so morning time or evening time so you can contact me so this is uh, i'm just uploading this video i'm just uh, building up this channel because of only one reason like uh, most of the times like uh, i don't know you and you don't know me in other words like the trainer is ready to impart the training and the resources who want the training uh, they they don't find the trainer so i don't find you you don't find me so in between there is uh, there are certain consultancies basically they charge amount from you and uh, they charge amount from me and uh, that's why i just want to avoid that so please uh, take up the course uh, not I don't say from me but from the direct trainers so please don't uh, waste your money and uh, please don't uh, let me waste my money <laughs> so that's my motive if you want you can directly contact me on this number okay uh, thanks a lot so